Welcome to Two Minute Gospels. My name is Gabriella. This is Michael. We're in a band called Him James 7. This is the 16th week of Ordinary Time from the Gospel of Matthew. That's a long gospel. Yeah. And this is called Two Minute Gospels. So here's what's going to happen. Gabriella is going to read the gospel. And if you know it, you can skip ahead to this time. We'll put the timestamp on here. Ready? Timestamp! Timestamp! What the fuck is that? <laughs> exactly. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seeds in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning. Then gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that the person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of seeds. Yet, when full-grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky will come to dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what has been said through the prophets. I will open my mouth in parables, I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. In the fields of the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up in fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out his kingdom. All who cause others to sin, and all evildoers, they will throw them into the fiery furnace. There will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. First parable is the weeds and the wheat parable. I find it interesting how the harvest master says, let the weeds grow up with the wheat, because you might uproot the wheat as well. Mm. And to me, that reminds me of how Jesus likes to give us chances. Mm. He'll give us chances and he's like, let them grow up, see if they'll make a change. And this parable doesn't illustrate that well, oh, that's because interesting. It's great. weeds can't turn into wheat. But... Right, right, right. But it's a, good, it's a good analogy. We're in the middle of planting our backyard right now. And oh, uh, <laughs> they're, they're all you, like the first week, all you could see were the the weeds, you know. Oh, and I'm goodness. like, oh man, it was go, like weeds pull them. If you, if you pull them, like you could step on the, you know, the the little baby grass that's coming yeah. up. And now we're getting baby grass, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll get a full backyard soon. Yep. But I love how how Jesus uses parables. He uses things that are all around us. We're in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're right in the middle of like corn and soybeans and like fields and that. Um, he uses things that are around us, things that we can relate to. We're, I'm not a shepherd, but like there were lots of shepherds around there, you know. So mm -hmm. he uses images that people can relate to to explain these spiritual concepts. It can tie in especially with the... Parable 3. Yeah, there's another quarantine. I call them quarantine parties. Obviously, I've joined the hair dye quarantine party. We've cut hair, but a lot of people made bread. And I have not done that, but we have made bread. Mom used to make homemade bread all the time. It's so funny, like, you put it in a bowl, it's like nothing, like the size of your fist. And then you come back later and you're like, what the heck am I gonna do with all this right. dough? You make a bunch of stuff. And like, it's easy to just like let it go and let it rise. And I feel like that can kind of symbolize if we trust in God and let God do his own thing then he'll help our whatever we've sowed mm. grow. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, it, it takes time for God to work, you mm -hmm. know? In bread, it takes time for the yeast to activate. I think sometimes we forget about that in the spiritual life. Yeah. You know, it takes time. It's, it's a journey. That's why we call it the faith journey. It's not a destination. So if you go to Mass safely, make sure you go to Mass and go with God. <laughs>